coronavirus the CAO and the Director of Procurement Services to execute the first contract on the table between the city and Manchester, Manchester Mark Bank. And I would for the purpose of changing the towing charge for the towing of the late delivery park vehicles from $65 to $95. Thank you, Mr. Is there a presentation?
don't know the value of, of the contract, how can you set a fair and reasonable rate? Um, the problem with this paper is that it seeks to legitimize and abet criminal misdeeds. Why are you seeking to exempt these people when uh, they have broken the law? Your body sets the, the rate of towing, not them. Uh, there are two parties responsible. Seabirds, because they began charging $95 at the beginning of June this year without receiving authorization from the city council. Yeah, 30 seconds. And the city is responsible, both the council and the mayor's administration, through its carelessness, lack of follow-through, and or gross incompetence, you all neglected to raise the towing through the normal legislative process by ordinance. Uh, and uh, finally, in, in the proposal from Siebert's attached to the April ordinance under the section entitled financial arrangements, they will give you $17. They say that they will give you $17 for every citation it's for towing with a $65 rate. Uh, I'm wrapping up. They also wrote, should the citation rate increase, you'll get 10%. On the following page of their proposal, it says it lists the, the charges for for parking tickets and citations, $65. This is the contract they approved. Okay. You all approved it too, and you shouldn't have been criminal activity. This deserves an investigation. I encourage everyone to sue the city or the contractor. Thank you.
I agree with Mr. Kilbert in that I think this was a mistake in with Mr. Samuels in terms of what was in the contract. But clearly the intent of counsel, the intent of city administration, and the intent of Cyrus was to begin on June 1st charging $95. And so is everybody's entitled to one mistake? And so for that, I will conclude this paper. Call the rest of them first. Your Honor, I'm going to call the court of lawyers. Mr. Farmer? Aye. Mr. Sammy? Nay. Mr. Hilbert? No. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graviano? Aye. And papers have been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm going to call the court of paper number 40. What is 2010-2013? Who authorizes the city of Oak to execute the asset purchase and assumption agreement to acquire all of the real property, personal property, and other assets of the Broad Street CDA? Good evening, Your Grace, Director of Finance. And I'm happy to report that all the T's and I's have been crossed at this point, and we're ready to go. We intend, with your action, assuming it is positive, we will sell debt tomorrow with a closing anticipated on November 30th. And I appreciate your patience as we work through the final issues. Thank you very much. Are there questions? All right. Thank you. Anyone from the audience to speak in favor of this paper? Anyone to speak in opposition? Back to counsel? All the questions, Madam Clerk? Counsel, we're going to go on to item 40, 2010-2013. Mr. Conner? Aye. Mr. Sandler? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. And President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move on to number 42. Resolution 2010, SR-171, to support the erection of a statute honoring Maggie L. Walker. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Hilbert, would you like to give us a brief explanation, please? Yes, thank you, Madam President. The patron of this paper, following up on a citizen-led effort to honor Ms. Walker, she, led by Melvin Jones, the president of the Alumni Association of Maggie Walker, in an appropriate way to honor her, Mr. Jones led the effort to get a stand for Ms. Walker. She is someone to be revered, a real pioneer, and the first woman to head a bank, as well as the first African-American woman as well. So certainly someone that has had an impressive history. And Ms. Walker said once, to have big dreams for our city, and to not have small dreams, because those small dreams aren't able to inspire the passions of the people. And so I would ask us to dream big, and to appropriately honor her with a statute, and that this is something that we can take to the governor and others at the state level, and take a report to this, and begin the campaign to raise private dollars for this statute. This will all be private donations, and we want to support that effort with this resolution. And I ask my colleagues to support this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. So anyone in the audience speaking in favor of this? Good evening. 
Council members. My name is George Jones. I'm the president of Maggie Walker Alumni Association and also I'm the president and the founder of the Maggie Walker statue. Um, only other thing I ask the city council, I would like to see if we could get that part of the road turned into Maggie Walker Parkway, the short part of it. And also, in support of y'all votes, I'm not buying the votes, but uh, this is a button. <laughs> Support of Mag Walker statue, and I want every city council person to get one tonight. <laughs> um, you know, this is something that's been well overdue. Uh, I'm getting a lot of support now. Um, I've got people now that want to donate money. Um, Joe Morrissey, he, you know, sent money, and you know, it's it's overwhelming. I mean, you know, this will do a lot of prevention. I mean, it really will. You know, and just the tourism, and all of a sudden, we've got the Centennial coming to um, the Silver Wall Fair. I mean, this would do a lot for Richmond. So I would like everybody to support, and I'm going to try to get surrounding counties, Hanover, his rifle, Powell, Tan, Petersburg. I'm going to get everybody involved in this. So I'm in support of it, and I hope that everyone on council support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your hard work on this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, anyone to speak in opposition? Hello, so person here, Citizen Virginia. I'm not so much speaking in opposition, similar to the time when uh, you all showed your support for the Manny Walker stand, but I had to express my reservation about the fact that the term African American had been removed from the language of, of uh, council's endorsement for the stand. And you all actually amended the language based on my comments, surprisingly. But uh, my apprehension here today with this uh, this monument, you know, I think she's a black woman, a totally great person for Richmond to recognize through a memorial. Uh, my concern, though, is the, the sighting of the monument at the intersection of Adams and uh, Broad. There's a tree right there where the monument is being proposed to be located. And I don't think a tree should be killed for this monument. As much as I don't want to recognize her, I don't think that's an appropriate way to, uh, that tree may have been there when she was alive, you know? That's kind of crazy to think about. And there's so little green space on Broad Street, we actually need more. What I would like to uh, urge the council to do, do the same thing you did at Lombardi and Broad Street. Uh, near the sewers, sewers factory. Uh, you guys closed off that little, it was a cut through right there, and then it's a little crummy. It wasn't really much of a park. But uh, you guys uh, allowed the person that renovated that property to, to incorporate that part of the street in their parking lot. Why not also take that little weird triangular property where nothing is right now, and I've never been anything there the whole time I lived in Richmond, and use that triangular park and close off the street and make it maybe a Maggie Walker Park. It would be a pocket park, no doubt, but this would be something that would keep maintain the tree and, and, and honor this woman. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you. All right, back to council. Thank <laughs> you. 
stretching your point, Mr. Hill, but you're very close. She emphatically, with great bellowing, said, dream no small dreams. I know that's what you're trying to get. And, 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 and it's a mantra that we ought to be using, particularly around our children every day. Uh, not just our children, because too often we sometimes dream a little small. Uh, uh, Bob, I don't know what's going on with the Saudi Bank. High school is uh, transition. Um, this one room was wonderful, and we, we we talk about some of the for-profit things that she did, but we rarely talk about what she did to get there. You see, she used a not-for-profit called the Order Saint Luke to build the infrastructure in order to finance the for-profit businesses. Businesses that were on Broad Street where black businesses typically were allowed. And and so it's a lesson, it's a it's a it's a it's a lesson for us today. It's a real model for us today, and that is that we ought to be building not for profits, but wealth building infrastructure in the black community. It, it, our businesses survive some way, form, or fashion. I don't know how it happens in, in a business climate of severe risk every day. How they manage to maintain, I don't know. Too many of them don't. Um, there's the risk of saying, oh, I forgot you. There's a risk of saying, oh, I don't have your own list. There's a risk implicit in what we do with city mechanisms and processes that risk the law for black and other minority businesses that we have had to live with for years. And so it takes not for profits oftentimes to help reduce that climate of risk in order that individual wealth building can take place. Uh, she understood it and she left us a model of how to do that. Uh, and, and it would do us well humanly. So, no, I, I support being a rat that I'd be uh, included as a co Thank you, Mr. Jill. Thank you, Mr. Jill. You know, yes, I would like to um, thank Mr. Jim for his um, efforts in this regard. I uh, support the paper, and certainly as we look at the site uh, for the placement of the statue, I think we're mindful of all manner of things, including whether or not the tree was the Thank you, Mr. Bell. Any other discussion? All oh, question now, sir? I'm sorry, no. I'm oh, sorry. Let me sidebar with Mr. Bell. Sorry, Mr. Shumis. Uh, I'm also, of course, in favor of this paper as a co patron and was excited when Mr. Jones came to me with this proposal, and I appreciate the apparently his tireless effort to honor and remember Ms. Walker in numerous ways. I'm also excited that that is in the district because anything that brings tourism to the city is good, and the city of Michigan is certainly a fantastic city for public art. Most of it's in the second district. If you're planning on visiting <laughs> second street in the It is a wonderful, wonderful idea. Uh, this paper does not dictate where the statue will go, the statue would go. It simply suggests the location to determine whether or not it would be. We may have many miles to get to travel on this, but I am excited to take the first step. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Remember, <coughs> save the trees. <laughs> All right, any other discussion? Okay, call the question number. Council voting on item 42. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Mr. Chairman, aye. Mr. Carter, aye. Mr. President Barrio, aye. That paper has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now let's go to number 43, which is, I believe needs to be amended. Yes, we have a motion to amend and vote on that paper. It's 2010-R174 to endorse the administrative proposal set forth within the 2011 City of Richmond legislative priorities for the Virginia General Assembly. The proposed amendment to that paper is followed, followed page one 
the quotation mark following the word assembly and spread the phrase as amended, page 1, line 17, after the word assembly and spread the phrase as amended. Ms. Newman, would you make the motion to amend that paper as read? So moved now. We're voting on the motion to amend that paper. Mr. Conn? Uh, Mr. Sanders? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newell? Aye. Mr. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. And President Blackie? Aye. Aye. The amended paper is before you. Thank you, Madam Clark. Thank you, Madam Clark. Is anybody in the audience to speak in favor of this paper? In opposition? Here. Hello, my name is Silver Persinger. First, I'd like to say that this is the sham process. You all have already presented this legislative agenda to Richmond General Assembly delegation a week and a half ago on November 11th at the Hilton Garden Inn at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, you all do not include the public in, in, in the crafting of, of legislative agendas. And, you know, I'm a big advocate of, of people having more power in our government and politicians, I guess, having less. Um, for empowering people. Uh, I'm going to give you some of my recommendations. I've given you these in the past and you have not incorporated them, although they are slightly mirrored in some of your uh, legislation you want to show support for, such as relaxing the Dillon Rule. I want to repeal the Dillon Rule. Uh, what the Dillon Rule does is it, it holds local, local governments in bondage to state government. And that's an attack on my right as a citizen to, to control my government, to have uh, a government that is uh, that, that that represents you know I don't know I just think the local governments could create better laws and state government the more localized the better the better it will be more and more reflective of the needs of the people of the locality. Uh, secondly, I want you guys to uh, support instant runoff voting. That's where you vote, vote your preference when there's more than two candidates on the ballot. So you vote your first, second, or third choices. And if no candidate receives over 50% of the vote, the candidate who receives the fewest number of votes is dropped from the ballot. And everyone that had their, that person as their number one choice, you count their number two as their, their, their preference. And hopefully you end up with a candidate with over 50% uh, support from the electorate. Uh, and let's see. Uh, so people will get to, to vote for who they prefer rather than the lesser of two evils. Because the fact is that both parties are evil and do the bidding of corporations and the rich and not regular working people. Uh, thirdly, uh, there's a bill that has been uh, introduced that I would like you all to support. It's bill number 1443 to decriminalize cannabis in Virginia. Uh, you know, this, this goes along with some of your support requests. You want to have alternatives to incarceration. There's no reason to put people in jail for using drugs that's no more harmful than tobacco or alcohol. Virginia has been growing cannabis in the state since the time of Jamestown, side by side with tobacco. Uh, so uh, I'll close with this quote from uh, Abraham Lincoln on the topic of prohibition. Prohibition goes beyond the bounds of reason in that it attempts to control a man's appetite by legislation. It makes a crime out of things that are not crimes. A prohibition law strikes a blow at the very principles upon which this government is founded. And uh, it's a big waste of money to put people in jail for smoking pot. So, uh... You have 30 seconds. Please begin to summarize. Uh, the, the United States has less than 5% of the world's population and 25% of its inmates. This is criminal. It's not right. It's immoral. And, uh, please, please, uh include citizens in the future in this process of developing this agenda. We, we, uh, we should be representing this government too. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> right, back to uh, Council for Common. Mr. Howard. Thank you. Uh, well, you can come up with the greatest idea in the world if you're not reflecting it off of the citizens in your district. You're doing a disservice and I believe that that we as a council, and I know that I did at district meetings, got a lot of input, but that whole the best ideas come when you're listening. And I believe that we are. Thank you, Mr.
For periods of greater than 15 consecutive days, a portable storage unit may be located on a lot only after issuance of a certificate of zoning compliance. A single certificate of zoning compliance may be approved for a portable storage unit to be located on one lot and subsequently moved to another lot in the city when the same owner or occupant owns or occupies both lots and the unit is for the use of such owner or occupant. Page 2, line 15, has the number 3, delete the sentence, portable storage unit shall not be located within any required yard, providing that upon approval of the zoning administrator, a portable storage unit may be located in a required yard at a location approved by the zoning administrator. When no viable alternative location is available on the lot, and insert the sentence, portable storage unit shall be located on a lot no more than a total of 25 days in any consecutive 12-month period for the same owner or occupant of the lot, provided that the portable storage unit be used by the owner or occupant in conjunction with construction, repair, or renovation activity taking place in the lot shall not be sub subject to the 25-day limit. However, such limits shall be removed immediately upon completion of the construction, repair, or renovation activity. Page 3, line 1, after the number 4, delete the sentence. Not more than one portable storage unit shall be located on a lot at the same time, provided that a maximum of two portable storage units may be located on a lot at the same time, when the total floor area of such units does not exceed 150 square feet. And insert the sentences. No portable storage unit shall exceed 150 square feet in floor area, and no portable storage unit shall be greater than 8 feet in height. More than one portable storage unit may be located on a lot at the same time, provided that the total floor area of all such units on one lot does not exceed 234 square feet. Page 3, line 8, after the number 5, delete the sentence, portable storage unit shall be located on the property no longer than 10 days in any consecutive 12-month period for any owner or occupant of the property, unless being used in conjunction with construction or renovation activity taking place on the premises, in which case such portable storage unit shall be removed immediately upon completion of the construction or renovation work. And insert the sentence, portable storage units that are subject to approval of a certificate of zoning compliance should not be located within any required yard, providing that upon approval of the zoning administrator, such portable storage units may be located in a required yard at a location approved by the zoning administrator. When the zoning administrator determines that no viable alternative location is available on the lot. Page 3, line 18, after the word deterioration, insert the sentence, identification of business owning a portable storage unit shall be permitted on such unit. Page 22, line 15, after the word include, insert the text, receptacles used for the collection of food, clothing, household goods, or similar items in conjunction with an activity conducted by a governmental agency or nonprofit organization. Or, page 22, line 17, after the word storage, insert the word of. We also have an amendment to item number three, which is ordinance 2000. 10-169 to amend the code concerning contracts for non-departmental appropriation for the purpose of requiring that all non-city entities to which the council appropriates funds in a non-departmental budget enter into contracts, enter, enter grant contracts prior to receiving such funds. The proposed amendment to that ordinance is as follows, page 195, after the word that. Delete the word all. Page one line nineteen after the word appropriation insert the text. Provided the provisions of this section shall not apply to line items in the non-departmental budget of the city that have one or more of the following characteristics. One, the line item is an appropriation to or for expenditure by a city agency. Two, the line item is an appropriation to a non-city entity subject to the reporting requirements imposed by section 2-8.3 of this code. Three, that the line item is an appropriation to satisfy an obligation under an existing contract on the instrument, page three, line three, after the word that, leave the phrase within nine days after adoption of this ordinance, page three, line five, after the word ordinance, insert the phrase for all appropriations effective on or after July 1, 2011. Also, item number eight, ordinance 2010 194. 
to authorize the special use of 3,800 to 39.16 Post Street Road and 415 through 527 Belt Boulevard to permit two freestanding signs identifying tenants of the properties. The proposed amendment to that paper is as follows, page two, line one, after the word dated, deleted, date, July 22nd, and it's certain dates, November 17, 2010, and November 16. After the year 2010, insert the word respectively, page three, line 20, after the word 100, delete the, 20, the 225, and insert 200. Page three, 20, line 21, after the word plans, delete the number nine, and insert the number seven. Again, I'm going to need a motion to amend item number three on this 2010-169 to January 10th as read. Item number eight on this 2010-194, amend and continue to January 24th as read. And finally, item number 11 on this 2010-209 to amend that paper as read and continue to December 13th. Mr. Hill, would you make that motion? So moved, you're voting on the motion to amend and continue those papers. Mr. Connor. Aye. Uh, question. Yes, sir. That includes item number three. That includes item number three. The papers to be. That's item number. Item number three, yes. which is 2010-169. These are all amended and continued? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So you're now voting on Councilman Hilbert's motion to amend and continue those papers. Again, item numbers 3, 8, and 11. Mr. Connor, you voted yes. Aye. Mr. Sanders? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newell? Aye. Ms. Travel? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. And President Wilde? Aye. Aye. Papers have all been amended and continued to the days as read. Thank you. Those are all of the other motions, and I'm holding the answer to that paper. Thank you, Madam Um This time we're going to call, I'm going to please call the list of speakers to the citizen comment. I mm -hmm. remind the speakers that we can choose to speak. Um, we have a person in the audience, he is red over there, and I'm Kent Kennedy from the mayor's office. Uh, if you have a problem with your speech, you can talk to the audience comment. And so, having said that, I would ask if the speech also, we need to have a discussion and perhaps an offline discussion before. So, can I go to the first speaker for this evening, Richard Warson. 